Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Well, I guess we're about ready to get started here on this thing. All right. Well, I can't switch here. I'll tell you, you do it left handed. Good to see you. I seen you scoring down there. Oh, eating eat breakfast? Right. Yeah, I didn't get it. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's get more in line here so we're facing it more than yeah, back to the middle. They may want to take a picture. Oh, yeah. Well, when they throw the money, you can catch it easier. See that? Do I need to put my face out? Yeah, yeah, put your case out in front of you, that's where it is. You mean to hold the money? Yeah, hold the money here. Yeah. Well, we'll go ahead and get started here. This is class 101 on backup guitar, I guess that's what they're calling it and everything. And I'll tell you right now, you're going to learn that this is going to be backup guitar, and it, but it's going to be uh, more towards fiddle and more towards old time fiddle. And we won't be playing any bluegrass or, or uh, Texas style, although those, you'll talk about them maybe. But So this will be basically what they had in the hills here for generations, which is the backup for the fiddler, you know. And uh, one word we're going to use, and I might as well let you know what it is now so you don't frown and wonder what. We're, instead of accompanist, we call ourselves seconds. Anytime in this music in this part of the country, uh, whether in this or in others, the guys accompanying the guy are called seconds. And that's what Don and I are, we're seconds here, you know. Oh, this is Cliff Bryan, Don Reed, and Rachel Hoagland, and I'm Gordon McCann. And I wanted to have a woman in here so you'd all be pleased to know that women also are involved in this, you know. They always were, but not quite as in the open as they are nowadays, you know. I was telling somebody last night, I've never seen a woman fitter when I was a kid. Well, they played at home, I think. I, they're worse, I've run into quite they a few both back then. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we'll just we'll play some things. We'll talk about this. I'll, I'll briefly just tell you, our job is to uh, back them up and to help them keep their time. That's that's the basic thing why we're here. We're human metronomes, literally. That's what we are. And the second biggest thing we do is to cover up their mistakes. <laughs> we play good loud and we can cover up all the mistakes well, they make, see? You're making any mistakes? I don't make no well, mistakes. That's why, because we're playing here and they can't hear them, see? That's the thing. Right there's another man that's a good seconder. Yeah, that's right. You should have brought your guitar along here. See? But anyway, we'll just play some tunes and talk about this. And uh, a lot of you aren't familiar with it. And uh, anybody play the guitar here? Any, any people play guitar except besides you? You do. But, Good, we can do about whatever we want now. Nobody will know if we're right or wrong. Let's just click, just go ahead and play one. That's uh, Don's second. Yeah, yeah, let's shortcut it. Don't play them three times through. We'll play them once or twice through, and that'll be enough to us. Yeah, twice would be good, yeah. There's more chairs back here if you need more chairs. Y'all need some chairs? It's cooler over there. You're in a breeze of some kind, I think. While you're sitting here, we'll just educate you a little bit. That instrument there has had that shape and, and spread all over Western civilization since about the mid 1500s. It was already in the colonies by the 1600s because they, the Puritans preached against it, and they would mention 
the fiddles and these frolics they had, and they already had Indian and black fiddlers back then. And this instrument didn't really come out of Spain, that's what I understand, until about the late 1600s. And uh, we didn't really see it in this country until about the time of the Civil War, you start seeing, uh, hearing, seeing notices of it, and seeing drawings of it and everything. And it really didn't get into the Ozarks until the late 1800s and early 1900s. That earlier, do you, did you always see guitar seconds, or did, was it banjo mostly? Oh, yeah, mostly seconds. Guitar, yeah, but before then it was mostly banjo, I think. So you're not older than me, you can remember that. That's right, see, that's it, that's right. <laughs> you think you're getting it. But anyway, so, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll play what you want to play here. Rachel has got us worried. She's, 15 and got her a learner's permit, which has got us all concerned now. So <laughs> we, we're going to make a rule that when she's going to drive, we want to know. You know so uh, that's all right. You, you, we kid her a lot. Well, maybe that's what my problem was. I did get a permit. Well, that may be, yeah. yeah. But uh, she's a student of Bob Holt. Now, Bob Holt is over in Douglas County, and Douglas and Ozark County, and Eastern Christian County, and right there. It's a little different world on the square dancing. I mean, it's it's a lot more vigorous and everything than the other counties are pretty much about the speed you play. And uh, but over there, you'll notice they they really have a hard driving uh, 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 tempo that they play to. And you want to play? You want to play? Huh? I'll play a whole dance since I just talked about speed. Then we'll play that next. Yeah, grab, grab the pee pad here. Thank you. 
more so than any of the other around here. That tune, Durang's Hornpipe, there was a, the first circus in this country came in 1780. And they came in the east and they were, had a, a dwarf with them named Hoffmeister. And they had a dancer with them named Durang. And uh, Hoffmeister wrote that tune for this Durang, and so that's where you get Durang's Hornpipe. And the guy that ran the circus was Ricketts. So he wrote one called Ricketts Hornpipe. So this music goes way back and everything. So uh, what do you want to play now? Oh, okay. That's kind of tricky. We're going to play a waltz here. If I can remember it. Do you remember Oop Pit? Canadian waltz? Yeah. Good. There's the man. shame of this whole thing. There are hundreds of beautiful fiddle tunes, and all the public knows is what we call the OBS syndrome, Orange Blossom Special. That's all you'll hear. You want to play in Branson? All you have to know how to do is play Orange Blossom Special and back the star up. Now that's it. That's all you got to do. And if you can play it on your back or on your head or anyway, that the crowd goes berserk over it. And here you've got these beautiful waltzes and the shottishes and the thing that's interesting about this old traditional fiddling is the variety of tunes. Uh, you play a shot. You play a shot, don't you? You play a shot, huh? Okay, think about it. Anyway, but all these, of course, all this music is dance music. That's originally what this this instrument was for was to play dances. And what it's very fragile. Even though you see a lot of fiddlers around here, a lot of fiddles now. Uh, young people, you know, it's not cool with their peers at school, you know, so uh, they kind of drop it sometimes or they get off into other things. And uh, it, it's just terrible if we lose this because it's really a part. It came, came, into the, it came into the Ozarks in 1723 with the French. That's when the fiddle first came into this part of the country. And all this has come down from, for generations. Uh, uh, I've sat down with Irish fiddlers from Ireland and played tunes that we played down here and not have to change a thing I'm doing. And yet it's all been orally. It's all been from ear to ear to ear. Because very few, you read music? No. I don't either. You read music, though. I can't well, read fine. the newspaper. Well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, that, that's how it, it's kind of like the ballads and the old storytelling in the Ozarks. It's the same thing. It's really a part of our tradition. And what are you, who's going to play what? Your, your turn. Okay, we'll play. That'd be good.
rag. Well, that, that was a rag. Now, that's another tune. Have you like. noticed there's any difference in the speed of the 15-year-old girl and the 78-year-old man? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Not a whole lot and everything. Yeah. Tell you a lot, I get asked all the time down here too, where can you go hear this music? Where can you well we're blessed in the Ozarks. It's everywhere. I mean there's more music parties going on on these hills now than there ever was in, until years and years ago, you know. But now you gotta remember when you go to these things, you're not gonna go hear a Carnegie Hall thing and uh, some of them get kinda out of hand as far as the music, you know. It, it's a lot of fun and everything. I know the one I used to go to when I started into this oh thirty five years ago or so, uh, I played the guitar all the time, but not in this music. And it was one of those deals where they sit in a circle, that's where they still do. And you may have some that know what they're doing and some that are just learning, you know. And so I'd make a chord and some guy sitting over here would watch me and he'd make one and put him a beat behind. And then some guy over here, it, this is the truth, I've got tapes of this, was watching him and he'd do his chord then, so that put him a beat. And you know, roll, roll, roll your boat, and that's the way the music. And so it got to be just a roar. There wasn't any sound to it, you know, but everybody had a good time. And if you're learning to play, usually at these things, people are very tolerant. They really are. If they know you're really trying to learn to play the guitar or the fiddle, either one, uh, they're to a point. Now, I mean, that can be like one guy used to come to Ozark, only knew C. That's the key of C, and that's all he playing the whole night, no matter what we were doing, what key you we were doing. <laughs> No, on a banjo, which made it even worse because it was louder then. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun, and uh, any of you have a chance to go to those too. Because, uh, now watch, always know where you're going though, because there can be some places in the Ozarks that are. You know, we have some like that down here. Yeah, tell them about your once a week, don't you? Tell them where you do once a week you're playing, don't you? You all play. the senior citizens down here every Tuesday night. Right there's the daddy of the program right there. Gordon. Can you give us a little history on Fiddle and Doc Roberts? Oh, not a whole lot, of course. Uh, Kenny Baker here this time, which is what I'm going to say, mention this tomorrow. Uh, you, the older fiddlers, even older than you, Fred, uh, when I was years ago playing with them and everything, they always talk about, where'd you get that tune, Doc Roberts? Or Eck Robertson? Or uh, Clark Kessinger or something, and then of course the younger Billy, Riddle, got Billy little, Thomas's dad, Luke Thomas. Well, this then get in a little later then for him, yeah. and then the real one then is was Tommy Jackson. That's the one really influenced a lot of our fiddling. But the last 20 years or so, I guess around that, it's been you ask the guy where'd you get that tune? It's Kenny Baker tune. He really has influenced our music around yeah. here. And uh, you all want to be sure and see him this afternoon or, or tomorrow here, I guess. I don't know how you're going to get the people in here because he'll have a good crowd. Well, you but, know about fiddling Doc Roberts. Well, I know about him. 30s. Yeah, I know 30s. who he was. Yeah. 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 Of course, he was more Texas style, wasn't he? Than, was he? No, he was. Uh, was he pretty he much this? Fiddle. Yeah. Fiddling Doc Roberts trio. Yeah. There was even three of them in the same. Yeah, I've heard of him going. Now, Art's my partner first, with an own all this. That was my first experience with Fiddle. Yeah. Eck Robertson was in that same Eck Robertson was the Western. Yeah, that's who I'm Texas thinking of. Eck Robertson, yeah. That's who I'm thinking of. He recorded in 1930. Yeah. He put 14 parts in Sally Goodman. First time it ever been done. <laughs> and the last, probably. I mean, that many parts. And I too. asked an old man of Mount View, Arkansas, I said, Can you play Sally Good? And he said, I've had five different ways, and one of them right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to play? Like, okay, now, another another type of. Now, you didn't really have this down in the Ozarks as much, but you did in Springfield, and you probably might have had it here in West Plains, but because of the German influence with the Schottish. And uh, even though they don't dance it, most fiddlers will play a shot. It's just maybe one, but they'll all play them. That's one thing. Go ahead and play, play your shot. It's a shot. You ever seen the shot? Any of you? One, two, three, hop. Stop dancing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
experiment. Well, you go up into you go up into Wisconsin and Minnesota and northern Michigan and go and the Dakotas, you see that shot is because those Germans and those Scandinavians all dance that shot. And it's a pretty dance. It really is a pretty dance. We just didn't have it down in here that much, I guess. But what do you want to play now? Here's one of Kenny Baker's tunes here, Chicken on the Porch.
Zad Tennis used to be on KWTO, he wrote this one. It's called Finley Creek or Finley River Blues. What was his name? Zad Tennis. He used to be on at the same time as uh, Buster Fellas and Ozark Red and a bunch of those fiddles that were on KWTO. Yeah, but you're still teaching, so we're keeping our fingers crossed that these, but we got to have dancing team. We've lost, we're losing the square dancing. That's the sad thing. And if these youngsters don't have, they're not going to sit and stare at the wall and play Soldier's Joy all day. Huh? Well, Jody's hanging in there, but 
square dance is getting scarce in this part of the country. But that'll, we hope we can get that going again. That'll maybe bring back the, the and the, sec, the, the scarcity in this country is not only fiddlers, the really scarce thing is this. Because these young guitar players don't want to second these people. They, they want to get out on either bluegrass or flat top pick or something, you know, and that, that's all over the country. I used to just think it was in the Ozarks, but I've talked to people from other parts of the country. And a lot of fiddlers quit playing because they have nobody to play with. And so anyway, you're lucky you have us. See, that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, what do you want to do, Jeff? I'll do a rag to the Cincinnati. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Smith's Rag. We played Smith's Real earlier. Is that what you think you're no, talking about? No, Arthur Smith. You know, oh, yeah. No, I don't I don't know that one either. I don't think I've heard that one. What about Temperance Real? We're getting ready to do Temperance that. Temperance or Teetotalers, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or Teetotalers is the other name for it. Oh, go ahead and play one, then I'll play Temperance yeah. next. What do you want to play? Now, here's another. There used to be a more of a variety, really, uh, in, well, in other parts of the country, especially in the old dark even, I mean. The different types of tunes, you know, and this is called a quick step. And this is Eli Green's Don't Even Try This, because I'll have to concentrate to know what I'm doing. Eli Green's Quick Step. temperance real yeah. Yeah.
I guess you never heard that in a bar then, because it's teetotalers or temperance reel. That's what they call it. What do you want to play now? We'll play one more piece, or that'll be. Well, we'll play two more pieces, that'll do it. Play a little. Okay, whatever. Whatever. What do you want? What are you trying to play? Whatever you want to play. What about Tom and Jerry? We played it earlier. Oh, oh, she's on this one. Good, because I don't want to have to second it again. Where's that? <laughs> Thank you. 
don't go back to the hotel if you can't find the parking space. I've had a hard time. Get Floyd back, Lord. Yeah, I know. I'll, get, I'll get Floyd and Jeff to get me back there. You did fine. The only thing is, on that first part, I think they usually do it twice. Twice? And then you go to the G. Okay. Was that the very first? Just at the very first or all the parts that you play? That's the very first one when you start it.
variations of green corn there are. There's a bunch of them. Is that what that is? Well, it's a variation of green corn, almost. Real close to that. Somebody just took it and polished it. Oh, yeah, that's what I like about that. I bet I've got four or five different ones. They're just green corn and they changed a few notes in them. That's why you need to sit down with me and tell me all this stuff. I don't know it though, really. I just kind of kind of know it. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. That. The other first one. This is pretty thin. Grand Picnic. Bob knew it, but I didn't know if he ever saw it. That's that's one of those. Yeah, I, hate yeah. But I, just I don't remember it either. I don't remember how it goes either. I just remember the name of it. Those French fiddlers up there played that. Phil Lou, in fact. Well, uh, probably getting worn down. Thank you. 
Uh, I think heard this one. That uh, Canadian. Oh, um, maple leaf. Maple leaf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not. Huh? Well, you may have. Well, what's that line? It's not maple leaf. It's maple. maple syrup. Maple syrup. Sure. Well, I got to get you that, too. I got to get some maple syrup. Mm -hmm. Not long. And then old uh, Don White from up here, Higginsville, Missouri, played a bunch of good two steps down there at, uh, at, at uh, Compton Ridge. Silver and gold two step and something he's else. He's good fiddling, huh? He really is. Now, he's really played from square heads. You can tell this the way he played. Who says he again? John White. Oh, yeah. yeah. Up at yeah. Well. He's, a, he's, a, he's a lot of fun to play with. It's kind of like Gary Johnson. He just has a good time doing it. Mm -hmm. Sort, but it has the same beat. Uh, that's, that's where the fiddlers are going kind of slow with it. The guitarists yeah. have to play the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I'll get two steps. I think there's one other. I'll, if I ever dig them out, I'll, I'll make you copies of them. And you wanted to learn that nightmare we just played a while ago. Uh, Rutland's Reel, didn't you? I don't know if I could take two of you playing that.
actually I tried to find there's another one called Watch Mother Foot. I think I found it was wasn't a very good recording. I'll check again and see. That was in I forgot different keys, but it's one line in our play and I can't remember where they even got them, but it seems like you sent me that. Watch my other foot? Mm -hmm. I may have. I just only spent a while ago. Mm -hmm. Mark said something about where it was from. Yeah, yeah. And yes, I don't remember it wasn't. Huh? Yeah, he was he just uh it's kinda hard to recognize him at first and the beard and everything. Who's that? Elliot Hancock was here. He judged the fit of the uh, Jake contest. Oh. You know, the judges. Well I saw him all up there, I didn't recognize him. Why was that one fourteen year old girl a judge? 